following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with your host, Larry Pezzavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pezzavento. Okay, boys and girls, looking good, Bill Red, feeling good, Lewis. Well, the uh, root canal went, uh, it was very uneventful. It was really no big deal. Um, it was uh, nothing, really, uh, two hours in the chair, but uh, didn't uh, need painkillers or anything. So, turned out to be all right. Don't let anybody scare you. Maybe I didn't have good rest. Maybe she didn't do anything. I don't know. <laughs> but I feel different. Um, anyway, it uh, was just one tooth, so it was not a big deal. All right, boys and girls, we are in God we're upon us. We've been waiting for something for about three weeks, and it is happening as we speak. Uh, cattle have opened down uh, right into the wheelhouse that we were looking to be a buyer, 134.50 uh, in October cattle. So, uh, you know, you'd want to be taking a nibble at them there if you believe in Fibonacci, if you believe in pattern recognition, if you believe in Rich Anderson. Because if it doesn't work, that's who we're going to blame it on. Anyway, it's uh, it's interesting to, to see that these patterns are, are coming together right now in the cap market uh, for October. Uh, and remember, Rich was very bearish when it was up around 148. And uh, he was saying we'd get to around the 135 level, you know, down about 13 cents. And he is uh, right in this level right here. So uh, this is where you want to look at it if you trade cattle. You know, to see cattle are good to trade. They trade several thousand contracts a day, uh, which is really, you know, enough for uh, small specs. Our bills are pretty good. Uh, the margin is, uh, you know, fair. Everything. You know, it's a good trading market. It always has been. I believe they started trading cattle back in 65 or 66, as I recall. Um, and um, it's been a pretty popular market uh, during the 70s. It was uh, it was gangbusters because of the you know inflation that we had. I remember the uh, the uh, the uh, housewives went on strike uh, buying meat once uh, cattle went above 85 cents a pound back in the 70s. Now they're at the dollar 34, and you don't hear from them at all. <laughs> so they, they train them, I guess, not to uh, worry about high prices. But anyway, that's what we're we're looking at here uh, in the cattle market. Um, when I tried to floor the exchange, uh, the CME in Chicago it was on uh, Jackson on the uh, west end there, and um, right down from the Board of Trade. And it was a new building at that time. It's, in, it's since been turned into an insurance building, as I recall. Uh, but uh, that was a really fun floor to uh, trade off of. Uh, every morning we would go into this little cafe right across the street from the exchange and have breakfast. And a bunch of the traders would be in there. And it was uh, it was just a different environment. Uh, but I used to stand in the uh, back end of the of the pits. I didn't like to go into the pits and trade. I only traded in the pits the first day I was there. I got stuck with a $6,600 outgrade. Uh, I had sold something to somebody. Uh, it was a five lot. It went in my favor. And and then he said loud to trade. He said, no, I don't remember. I don't remember. Well, this guy had done this three or four times, and uh, that was his last time, and it was his last warning, but I got stuck with it, and so I did not. Uh, I didn't lose the money. I just didn't make it, but uh, a lot of people did that back in those days. Uh, you can't do it now with electronic trading, but they did it back when we had uh, open outcry. Uh, that's another advantage of uh, electronic trading. The people have to be on the other side of it, have to have money up Back in those days, they didn't necessarily have to do that. Remember, the the CFTC didn't start till 1975, and then right after that, it was the NFA. So there was very little, uh, uh, I'm going to call it, uh, people looking over your shoulder uh, up until the, um, the mid-70s. It was all done by word of mouth and handshakes, uh, and it was a good business. For many years, nobody ever really did that. The only problem they ever had was a guy named Simplot. Uh, he was a guy out of uh, Idaho, I believe, and he reneged on the uh, World Potato Contract, and that ruined the potato contract. He just literally wouldn't do it. They took him to court. I don't remember what happened with it, but uh, 
He would not uh, make good contracts. I don't remember. I probably should have known it, but maybe he didn't know it, and I forgot it. But anyway, that was the only time I can remember where they had one that just literally didn't do that. We'll probably have more of these before it's all over with all these derivatives because I worry about the counter risk of some of these trades, especially the ETFs and how they, how they mark them to the market and stuff like that. Um, we had a, a big rally uh, starting in the market last night. Uh, let me just give you an idea where the thing started. Um, in the middle of the night, uh, we had a, uh, a big move down uh, because China was down so much and the Nikkei and, uh, and the Hang Seng. And we made a, a perfect 61% retracement uh, in the NASDAQ futures. Now, when the chat was happening, we were also making a retracement in the DAX. And I've, I showed you that the other day. We had made the 61% retracement, and we broke below that. And what it did is it went down to the 786 retracement. So both of those were happening uh, after our close at around, uh, I think, around 7 o'clock uh, New York time, as I recall. And um, then the market, you know, had a pretty good rally off of that point. Folks, I don't think these rallies mean very much. You know, I, I could be wrong, but the overall looking at these markets uh, and the, the stock charts and everything, they just get more and more bearish. I mean, they're just, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't want to be, you know, uh, flailing a horse here, but um, I just don't see anything that uh, that makes me believe that this thing is going to turn around from here. It just looks uh, very, very negative. The breadth of the market is still uh, looking relatively poor. I mean, there's nothing uh, in there that will tell you that there's going to be a big change. And, you know, we're breaking down below serious support in some of these things. So it's uh, it's neither here nor there that it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, maybe I'm wrong. You know, I, c I could be, you know, 100% wrong. We'll see what... Uh, see what's left and we've got you know we got problems across the the world but we always have problems across the world it's not a big deal what we have to do now is to you know, simulate what these things are going to do we have a um, oh so we have a first question all right all right we've got a first question in the room here today uh, and that's about the apple computer give me a second here and i'll put this up Okay, this Apple, uh, everybody that's bought Apple since January is pretty much underwater, uh, with the exception that the people that bought it on the 24th uh, or 25th of, uh, of August, those people still have a profit, but everybody else uh, is pretty much underwater. Uh, when we rallied back from the high, uh, we went within a half a point of the exact 61% retracement uh, in Apple at that 117.26 uh, level. We came within a half a dollar of that exact uh, retracement. We're now trading at, uh, you know, 114 and change. Uh, so it's down just a little bit from the fit point, but really, really not very much. It hasn't reacted nearly as much. This, mar this, this stock is a lot less volatile right now than some of the other stocks that we had seen uh, at that time. I wanted to uh, show you the, uh, the NASDAQ chart uh, on a little bit smaller time frame so you can get an idea of how how accurate that ABCD pattern was uh, from the past four days of trading. Uh, you'll see that the retracement back was a 38%, and then we came down and made a perfect ABCD pattern uh, in the NASDAQ down there at that 42.21, and we rallied a little better than 90 pips uh, to the uh, the high intraday last night. Uh, whether that's going to hold or not, you know, will have to remain to be seen because we've got the market, you know, going to be opening pretty soon, and it always has a you know big gyration, you know, when it when it opens. But uh, we'll we'll see what's going to happen now. If this market is really bullish, then what's going to happen is you're going to get a tremendously bullish day today, with the Dow up more than 300 points. Uh, you know, taking back everything that it's lost over these last few days and that would tell us that yes maybe this market has has made some type of a major bottom and uh, you know we could go a little bit higher we're facing some really interesting cycles uh, as we've uh, talked about before uh, this is the uh, the equinox we have the autumn equinox today uh, and then uh, coming into uh, uh, the 27th which is which is Friday uh, I think it's Friday. No, it's Monday, isn't it? When do we see? 23rd, 24th? Yeah, that has to be Monday. We have the uh, we have the lunar eclipse, 
and the the full moon now that one will be the uh similar one to what like we had in 1987 if we're rallying up into that that would be a similar scenario where we bottomed uh, on the full moon let's try that again larry we bottomed on the new moon of the uh, around the 14th rallied up into the the 27th that's pretty much what happened in 87 87 we we bottomed on october uh, september the 25th rallied up into october the 6th and then we had the big uh, big sell-off. I don't think we're going to have a crash uh, of that type of magnitude. I think we're going to have more of a bear market. That's even more devastating than a crash because the crash is boom, bada bing, bada boom. It's over with, and you go on, you know, with your life. With the with the bear market, it it extracts a little bit of uh, juice out of you every day, and those are the most uh, devastating and the, the ones that hurt you the most because you you sit on your hands, you don't do anything, you don't get out of the stocks that you need to get out of. Of, and people, you know, trap you into think you're going to buy it on the way down, and that's the toughest part of uh, this whole investment thing. I became a technician after the bear market of 1974 because I bought into that. You know, if it's a good buy at 20, it's a good buy at 10, it's a good buy at 15, it's a good buy at five, and pretty soon you're out of good buys. And uh, but anyway, that's uh, that's the way I became a technician. Is I wanted to realize I didn't want to listen to what anybody tried to tell me and uh, that's it one of my saddest stories here in tucson is my uh, one of my doctors uh is a uh, was a member of the family of portland cement that was bought by uh enron and uh, they converted his stock uh, into enron and uh, he asked me to watch it for him and i did and it got to 95 and i i urged him to try to take profit and he said, no, the tax implications were too much. Uh, at 85, he didn't want to sell it at 85. At 65, he didn't want to sell it at 65. And I told him if it gets below 50, it could go to zero. And he didn't believe me. And it went to zero. And uh, it destroyed his life. Uh, he literally had a nervous breakdown. He had to quit practicing medicine. Uh, he moved back to uh, Colorado. And he works in a, a small uh, emergency medical office there uh, after having a really thriving practice uh, in Tucson. So, you know, just because he was a doctor uh, doesn't mean he knew what he was doing with investments because you got to put a you got to put a floor on some of this, folks. You know, when you're wrong, that's it. You know, you just got to get out of it. Now, let's take a look here. Uh, uh, on the work done by uh, my friend Steve Moore at Moore Research. Uh, we've talked about this before, and this is what he's looking at, making the comparison of July of 1996 to December of 1998 to the current market. And as you can see, as we come in here uh, to, this, to this October time period, you know, we could be looking at a, a pretty significant bottom. Uh, and that that would certainly fit within this model that we have now. The way this model works, he gets this from Commodity Quote Grass. We have a tremendous pattern recognition model uh, in there that the owner of the company, Timmy, put in years ago, and uh, that's where he gets it. So we'll take a little break here. We'll be right back. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. 
years. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, folks, we were talking about uh, the work of Steve Moore, uh, more research about a possibility of a major bottom in the stock market, and uh, that's certainly a possibility. Uh, last night uh, in the uh, in the E-mini S&P, we came very close to a uh, 60 uh 1% retracement of this whole move. Uh, we came within about uh, eight points, eight or 10 points of it. And we've had a pretty good rally so far today, but that BD is still standing out there. We could still get down there. Uh, if we break below 1900 in the SP and we're handles away from it right now, uh, that would tell us that we're, you know, we're heading down to you know, much, much lower prices. Um, uh, the trading gods are not smiling on us so far. This morning, if you bought the cattle down, uh, you want to have your stop just a little below 133 and 132. So you don't risk more than uh, you know a penny and a half on this because uh, you know some of these things can go into a you know, free fall mode, and uh, these patterns do fail. So, uh, but but remember, we can blame it on Rich Anderson. We don't have to blame it on ourselves. We'll give him the responsibility for this because he told us to get short at 148 and to buy it back at 134. So we'll have to complain to him about going. Going long at 134. Anyway, that's funny. I should not say anything like that. Okay, let's uh, go on to the next one that we're looking at here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm trying to uh, clear my throat one second here. All right. Now I wanted to show the. Uh, oh dear, that's the same chart. Give me a second here. I've got to put this in the perspective. Oh, I wanted to uh, switch over here to a silver to show you uh, that we've had a pretty good bottom. I believe come in and silver uh, also in the gold 
but the silver stopped exactly 61% retracement yesterday at uh, $14 and uh, 68 cents uh, per ounce. It hit there three times uh, during the day, so there was uh, some pretty substantial buying uh, at that time. Uh, the gold held the uh, 11, uh, 17, left 20 area, uh, and it's had a little bit of a rally. But these markets are still not uh, still not out of the woods as it, uh, we have a little ways to go. I watched the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar and the Indian dollar for a potential uh, place where many of these commodities could turn. And uh, I'm not, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're getting close. They're, they look like they're trying. They really are. The $64 question is how much longer, you know, are they going to try? Um, and one of the ones that Mr. Z in the uh, chat room has been watching is the... Um, uh, trading room I mean is the uh, wheat and as you can see uh, on the wheat we went up and we made the 61% uh, retracement last night at the 504 and a half level and we didn't get a penny above that as of yet I'm sure we'll gap above that because it looks like we've got another 10 cents to go at least on the upside in wheat which would make a, a really nice uh, you know a b c d pattern you know, going uh, at that spot. That's what I would be watching. So, we'll keep uh, keep our eyes uh, keep our eyes on that. Um, the someone asked a question: Is how do I know that the market at the bottom on what was, was happening with or the Nasdaq? Hey, I don't. All I'm saying is that there's that's when the pattern completed, and that's when the rally started. Uh, they both hit the same spots around the same time. So uh, that's all I look at is the patterns. I don't know much more than that, and I know I know zero about fundamentals. I, I mean, I really I, I force myself, you know, not to uh, you know look at this stuff. It it really does. I used to be a subscriber to the Wall Street Journal for many many years. And one of my mentors, uh, Dave Nelson, told me that the only use that the Wall Street Journal had was the lining of the bottom of a parrot's cage. So uh, I've always kept that in mind. <laughs> uh, it was really uh, ironic about that is because uh, Investor's Business Daily, which came out to compete with the uh, with the Wall Street Journal, my uh, daughter happened to be uh, involved in that a little bit because she was dating Bill O'Neill's son, and uh, they went to the same high school, and uh, they, uh, they're still very, very good friends to this day. And uh, But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Okay. Let's uh, let's move on to the next chart that we have. We're going to uh, try to have Rich Anderson off the break, but he's had a, a little bit of a technical glitch today with the telephones and stuff, so we might not be able to uh, to have him on. Uh, but we're going to do our best to have him on the next time uh, that we uh, that we have him on. Um, the next question that someone had was about the um, chart that I posted. Uh, oh, they asked for a gold chart. Well, I put the gold chart up first. And uh, no, I don't know everybody on the planet. I'm just old. When you, when you get to be old, you know a lot more people than you know when you're young. That's the that's the bottom line. Uh, as you can see, the gold went down to that 1120 level. It almost hit a 20 minute line, uh, but it missed it by about two bucks uh, an ounce. But it made the ABCD. We're having a little bounce now up to the 1129 level. So we're going to take a break here. We'll come back, and uh, we'll be right back after these few words. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile traders market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesamento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we're still alive in cattle by a thread, and I'm afraid that thread is on greasy ground. Anyway, let's take a look at something that is working, and that is the uh, wheat. We talked about that, that we were getting ready to uh, pop above that 504 level, which we certainly did. We're trading up around 509 right now uh, on our way to, it looks like, around 515, which will be uh, the bigger ABCD pattern, you know, up in, uh, to that level. So... Uh, keep an eye on that wheat. Uh, it's got a chance to turn in here, and uh, in fact, it's already turned to the tune of about uh, 40 cents, and uh, much to the happiness of Mr. Z in the room. We want to thank him for all of his efforts that he gives us in following these uh, patterns because uh, he certainly has a handle on from the support and resistance and some of the things that make these markets move. He's got a really good grasp of uh, some of the things that we're looking at. Uh, I've had a request to bring out a chart that I talked about yesterday, and that is uh, one of the charts uh, on the 20 min line, and I've had more I've had more interest in the 20 min line than probably anything that I've said in the seven years I've been on um, TFNA. 
man. It's been eight years. Wow. Can't, where does the time go? Uh, anyway, all it is is it's a, it's a connection of lines from previous lows and previous highs. What had happened is Jim Twentyman discovered this uh, 50 years ago. He was a GAN person. He drew a lot of the 45 degree and the 90 degree lines and, uh, you know, the, the 27 and a half degree lines, the sloping lines. He noticed that the 45 degree line, many times the market would go back and touch that line. The, W.D. Gann talked about the importance of that line, but uh, he never really gave it an indication. Now, this is not a pattern or anything, folks. All this is is a line that that pops up uh, from you know something that happened in the past. I don't know uh, the the meaning of it. All I know is that when you see it, you should pay attention to it, especially if it's coming in at a 61% retracement from a rally high or a 786. If it comes in at that point then that's where you really want to look at it because if the market goes back above that line then that's telling you that the thing is probably wrong and then you have to move on to uh you know move on to uh, something else oh we got a caller from uh, clearwater david are you there hey larry good morning sir good morning how are you today oh i'm doing well i am doing well how's uh how's larry I'm good. Yeah, I'm doing fine. This is a. I woke up today. I was above ground. I'm staying away from open graves, and I only read the first edition of the obituaries every day, like my grandpa told me. So, so far, so good, as they say in the trade. Oh, I hear you, my friend. As we used to say in the uh, 82nd Airborne Division, any day above ground's a good day. This yeah. is true. Any, anyways, um, real, real quick, before, if you don't mind, I'd like to look at the Aussie dollar, but real quick, I had. I guess this goes to a comment maybe someone in the den made earlier about do you know everybody under the planet when I got the email that uh, your good friend uh, Mark Douglas had uh, had passed on. I had no idea that because uh, I read his book a couple years ago, Trading in the Zen, and I'm thinking to myself, why does that name sound familiar, right? And then I read your your you know your obituary and read of. I'm like, man, is there anybody this guy doesn't know? But, oh, there's uh, a lot of them. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, it's like. I'm listening to you talk about Bill O'Neill and his daughter, you know, or his son or whatever, and your yeah. daughter. Like, man, this guy knows everybody on the planet. Well, L.A. Like, uh, L.A. was pretty small 40 years ago, you know, so it was a very small investment community. We used to go to the, the same meetings and stuff, and he owned a, uh, still owns Daily Graphs, I believe, and that's where a lot of people got their charts because we didn't have the computer stuff, you know, that we have now. I mean, sure. you, know, you had to search sure. for your, your get commodity perspective was the biggest one, you know, for that kind of stuff, so. Right, anyway, yeah, the Australian dollar has got a real shot uh, for a potential major bottom, and that's mainly uh, because of this big pattern that we've had here. I'll put the monthly chart in here to let the dinners uh, take a look at it because it's one of the more powerful patterns uh, that you have because you have a really strong cycles from July of 86 into March of 01, and that was due to bottom this year. And as you can see, we have higher bottoms now in the Australian dollar. So this has got a chance uh, for the Australian market to turn, and this might be the thing that makes the, you know, makes the stock markets of the world, uh, you know, per perk up and make notice because, uh, you know, we've been in a major commodity bear market for 18 months. Maybe this is going to be the end of it. I don't know. This thing could fail too. So uh, all I know is that this is the pattern that I'm watching and I'm watching the Australian dollar versus the U.S. dollar very closely also. Yeah, I've been watching um, Like a Hawk for several couple of weeks now actually and I traded through the uh, the Chicago, you know, the CME that because you can get the volume uh, you know, information on that you can't get on Forex. And from what I've been, you know, the numbers are slightly different than, you know, between the Forex banks and the, uh, the, the and the futures exchange. But what I'm seeing is, is you know, this came in, and I'm looking at the December contract. I mean, this came in at a low of about uh, 0.687 on uh, September the 4th. Um, had a nice little, uh, you know, AB, several ABCDs up. And then something very interesting happened at the 2 o'clock hour on the 17th. Someone came in and bought 40,000 contracts. I mean, this thing shot up like a like you know, and in, in, in the blink of an eye, it just went north. And now we're retracing back. You know, we uh, we broke through the uh, the uh, the 618 retracement last night, at least on the futures, at the at the 9 p.m. hour. And it looks like, as best I can tell, um, it looks like this thing is on the futures at any rate is on the hourly doing a, a a three drive to a bottom. And then if it hits the 786, like I'm in, like I'm ex believing it will or expecting it to, I should say, um, it'll also have price RSI divergence, which is a nice little pattern I picked up from Steve Rhodes. 
um, coming in at this 69.6951. And this, this, you know, if the commodities don't crash further, this thing might have a chance. That's the number that I'm watching, too, is 69 and a half in the Australian dollar. David, I, I don't know if you uh, have, have heard about this before, but then the CME, you know, the futures that they have, uh, they started trading those back in 76, and they were pretty popular up in th through the 80s. And then the Forex banks came in, and, uh, you know, they didn't like that. And so uh, they basically took over, and the, the Merck didn't do the advertising necessary to keep the Forex, you know, uh, dream alive. And so it became the 13, you know, Forex banks that are really running the show now. They run about 99% of all the business. I believe the Merck is 1% or less of all the Forex business, but it's tradable because you have plenty of traders in there trading against that. But 40,000 contracts in Forex would not have uh, made a big move like that uh, yeah. because, you know, they have people on the other side you know, in, in billion quantities, not millions, but billions. So uh, it takes a lot to move something in Forex, whereas at the Merck, it would be a little bit less. So keep that in mind when you trade those that, you know, that's what you have to be, uh, that's what you have to be watching. Yeah, absolutely, because from what I can tell and what little I know about Forex, I mean, those, you know, those calls are, are, are made in London on the uh, on the open there from the, you know, because that's where the big banks for, you know, Forex really are, from my understanding, are in London. Um, mm -hmm. But it's unusual to see that kind of volume, it, you know, to some extent, when you see, at least mm -hmm. in, in my experience, when you see an outlier like that, with that kind of volume that, you know, it's an indicator of something. Someone's buying something yeah. for a reason, you know, and to see that kind of volume on a one-hour uh, yeah. one bar is just standing out like a sore thumb. So it's yeah, it certainly does, business, that's too. for sure. But remember, it's, sometimes it's other people's money. They don't have any skin in the game, so they don't really care, you know? <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Isn't that yeah. the truth? Well, listen, Larry, thank you so much for taking my call. I greatly yeah. appreciate it, and I'm uh, very sorry about the uh, the passing of, your, of, of, of Mark. I know yeah, reading your talk, email that yeah. he was a friend with yours for a real long time. So Yeah, I talk with his wife, wife each day, and she's coping with it. You know, she has good days and she has bad days. It's funny because his, his little cat, Tigger, who was by his side all the time, he's, he's having a rough time. They might even have to put him down because he won't eat. He just lays around and uh, he, won't, uh, he won't even... Uh, won't won't show any kind of uh he's basically in catharsis is what he is and so i don't know what they're going to do but he's really in bad shape so oh, shame. they were good friends anyway that's the way it goes oh one other thing i wanted to mention to you david since you trade forex if uh if you ever watch uh the london opening uh that's the the key time for forex trading because that's the brokers get in there and they start you know filling their orders to take care of the you know the engines and airplanes and you know clothing stuff that's sold all over the world where they're converting c currencies back and forth and uh, that opening hour can really be a good indicator for foreign exchange because uh, it's like the opening price used to be uh, here in the United States when the stocks opened at 9:30 in the morning uh, they open at eight o'clock over there but they, you know there's a staggered opening because you know there's not everybody's doing business between eight and nine o'clock it's pretty much up and running pretty heavily so if you watch those lows and highs in the first hour uh, it can sometimes really be helpful in uh, determining which side of the market you want to be on yeah, absolutely four o'clock our time and i knew that larry you know how i knew that you uh -huh. taught me that about five years ago i ah, appreciate oh, you good, reminding then. me man <laughs> I remember. It was at a Starbucks in Clearwater, as I recall. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Sure did. Sure did. Yeah. I learned a lot from you that uh, yeah. that particular conversation. And you were a real gentleman to uh, let me call you on your cell phone. And uh, I haven't forgotten it, Larry. You are yeah. an absolute is gentleman. The, uh, as are all the people at TFNN. Is the Scientology uh, head office still in Clearwater? Ah, oh, man, yeah. It's a shame. Yeah. These, these people, I don't want to get whatever, but oh. you see them walking around and look like Yeah, zombies, let's, let's don't yeah. talk about politics stuff or religion. Yeah, we got, the, no we got the Pope here in Philadelphia. That's tough enough. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I hear you, Larry. Well, listen, thank you so much, and uh, have a great day, sir. I appreciate you taking my call. Hey, thanks a lot, David. Okay. Uh, all right. The next question that someone had was about the uh, price of the Canadian dollar because I've been bouncing around trying to get filled on this Canadian dollar for a long time. And uh, we'll take a look at it here. We're not very far away. We're only about 150 pips away, the Canadian, uh, up around that 134 to 135 level. So we want to keep an eye on that uh, because it's such a, a real critical level to watch. But uh, it looks interesting, at least from this point of view. And we'll We'll, we'll see where we 
where we go from here. But uh, it does look uh, like it has a chance here to make some type of a, of a pretty good move. And uh, I think it could be the, one of the bigger moves uh, of the uh, commodity markets here, foreign exchange markets, because we're completing an ABCD on the monthly chart. We're completing a, a two one point six one eights on the daily. Uh, that doesn't mean that's going to hold because, you know, if it pops through there, it could go far, far away. It just means at that particular point, it's going to, uh, you know, be a spot where you're going to be able to uh, look and see if you can find a really good entry point because if you are right, that move will make thousands of dollars over what you're going to, uh, you know, than what you're going to risk. That's the, the, the bottom line. Now, uh, I did want to show you the uh, New York Stock Exchange index chart from yesterday because this uh, sort of reiterates that the uh, – that, that, you know, we are in a bear market. Uh, we've gapped down twice now since we had that shooting star candle uh, on the 17th. And uh, we'll uh, see if this is going to be the case or not, but we are starting down. The only way that this thing can turn to be bullish now, in my opinion, is if we turn strong from here and we take out that high of the 17th, then, uh, you know, then all bets are off. We could go a whole lot higher. And uh, but this is a, such an incredibly bearish par uh, chart, folks. I mean, it it really, it really is bearish. If you look at this, that you know this this market gap down below the lows of July. That means everybody that bought it uh, during bought stocks during June or July are pretty much underwater, with the exception of the people that you know might have Apple or you know stocks that came back really fast. But the overall market, you know, they're they're in big trouble. And then we left uh, you know three big gaps on the way down, and we rallied back to not quite a 61 percent retracement of the whole move and then we we started down hard when we should have which was around when mercury was uh you know going retrograde uh on the uh the 17th now we've got a lot of cycles that are coming due we've got the equinox of course today and then we have tomorrow i believe we have a conjunct uh, Venus conjunct uh, Jupiter, which is usually positive, but you know, you know, sometimes they're negative. You know, you know, sometimes they'll flip around and be negative. But I don't don't know what that is. But the next key date uh, to look at, of course, is not until we come out into uh, October. And uh, by the way, this is the last day, the high holy day of Yom. This is the holy day of Yom Kippur in the Hebrew faith. And I want to send all my uh, uh, condol not condolences, but uh, greetings to everyone that uh, celebrates that holiday. Uh, I was at Drexel for six years, and uh, almost everybody, uh, every broker there, there were 32 uh, brokers in the office, and there were uh, 44 were non-Jews, but uh, we all celebrated together on that. And there were there was never a a, a broker in the office on the uh, on on the Yom Kippur. We took care of the four commodity brokers, 20 myself and Ernie and uh, what was I can't remember the fourth guy's name I still can't remember anyway we took care of pretty much the business along with the two wire operators but uh, it was uh, really uh, an important day my kids I remember uh, so vividly and they still remember it too and now they're in their late 40s but uh, when they had the bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs and believe me there were a lot of them because uh, being having that many brokers uh, you had a lot of kids and so there were so many uh, celebrations that boy, they sure remembered those uh, those wonderful uh, events that we had. Uh, one t once, the, one of the people that were friends with Neil Diamond, and he came and and sang songs at the uh, at the bar mitzvah. So it was uh, you never knew who was going to show up, uh, but it was uh, it was a lot of fun back in those days. Okay, next question uh, that we have is about uh, oh, someone asked about that Steve Moore. That's uh, Steve Moore is Steve Moore uh, of of uh, more research. He's up in Oregon. Uh, he does a whole lot of stuff in commodities and things. And, uh, you know, that's really what we're looking at. So anyway, uh, stay, stay tuned here. We'll wrap up the show in just a little bit. 877-927-6648. Uh, Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. 
Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch the money map. Masters, as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Okay, folks, we're back, and I just received news from our friends here at TFNN that uh, Lawrence Berra, Yogi Berra of the New York Yankees, passed away last night, I believe at the age of 89 or 90. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have met him several times through the years, and I really liked him very much. We got a caller from uh, our good friend Brent from California. Brent, are you there? I am, Larry. It's great to talk to you again. How are you? Good. How are you, my friend? What can I do for you? Calling about Priceline. Um, I really like the patterns this thing stepped up. I, I uh, sorted it. My target was 1340. It got up to 1338. Um, it was completing a couple patterns there, a 786 retracement, maybe equal CD. And then uh, so I just wanted you to take a look at it and see a thought about, you know, country where it could go to. 
Well, I think you're on the right side of this one. You know, you're doing a better job with it than I am. I haven't looked at Priceline. You know, I've got too much else going on with some of these other uh, patterns that are going on. But, uh, you know, you've had a good break. And, uh, you know, it's only broken, you know, about 70 bucks from the high. And I would put your stop over yesterday's high and let her rip. That's what I would do. I don't see anything else you can do. Uh, but to do that, that would be the best thing to, to do to hold on to it, I would think. It sure seems to set up the patterns nicely. If you're a little patient, and just give it time to... Yeah, well, patience you know, always set. good, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> seems to be a, a good, uh, you know, strategy so far, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I think right, I, well, that's, that's the easiest thing to do, is just put your stop above yesterday's high and let her go, because if the market weakens up, it'll be pulled down with the rest of it. So we'll see what happens. All right, you have a great day, Larry. It's good to talk to you. Okay, again. tell Leanne I said hello, and uh, thanks for calling in, Brent. We appreciate it. All right, give all the best to your family. Okay. All thanks. right, folks, we uh, want to end the program here. Keep in mind that we've got, uh, you know, the longer-term charts still look bearish. It's going to take a move of more than four or 500 points to the upside to change my mind. And, uh, and that doesn't mean it can't happen, but uh, that's what it looks like right now is that we are in a place where we could easily, uh, you know, melt down from. Uh, we had some bad news overnight, but the market handled it extremely well, and, which it's been doing all along. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless and do something kind for someone who has a lot less than you today because we are truly blessed. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.